This is High Life, your indispensable entertainment guide. Entertainment guide. I'm Stu McConey and still to come, the insider's guide to Dallas, Texas, our resident techno head here with the new generation of projectors, amongst other things, and my special studio guest, the singer, songwriter and general anti-folk hero, Jeffrey Lewis. Do you consider yourself to be a, uh, a, an artist who sings then or a, 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 you know, a, a singer who draws? Um, I would consider myself an artist who sings, although... Referring to myself as an artist sounds incredibly, uh, I don't know, okay, yeah. pretentious or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a guy who likes to make comic books, who finds himself making up songs. Also, you, you, um, well, how would you describe the music? I mean, you get this anti, this anti folk tag has been uh, applied to it, and some similar musicians. But if I know anything about musicians, they always despise. I mean, any kind of label that I'd applied <laughs> to their music. So you're now going to tell me that you don't like it. Actually, I do like it, uh, just because it's better than having to call yourself a singer-songwriter. And there, I mean, it really makes no sense because it's anybody who happens to play at the Sidewalk Cafe in, in New York uh, automatically gets tagged anti-folk no matter what they do. It sort of makes sense for myself because there's a lot of stuff where the acoustic is going through a distortion pedal and yeah. it gets uh, completely into noise and punk and there's other stuff I do where it show drawings while I'm singing songs. It wouldn't really fly in a traditional folk club. Well, thanks, Jeffrey. We've still got Franz Ferdinand and Scissor Sisters, plus CDs and DVDs from The Godfather of Stolen Pride. <laughs> you say you got a heavy heart. say you got a heavy heart. You say you got a heavy heart and it's hard for you to start carrying your heavy old heart You say you got a heavy load You say you got a heavy load You say you got a heavy load Walking down the road carrying your heavy old heart Well, um, I grew up in, on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, and my parents were and are hippies uh, in the best sense of the word, and not in the mindless pothead sense of the word. And we never had a television in the house when I was growing up, so I just read comic books uh, from... Yeah, I read a lot of books also, but I, comic books sort of taught me how to read, so I remember, you know, not even knowing how to read and having comic books around, um, and was always occupying myself by drawing, and, and as far back as I can remember, I, that was, you know, my stock answer to what you want to be when you grow up, was like, to draw comic books, make comic books, uh, and be a spy also, apparently. I, well, that was an answer for a couple of years, too. Hey, it's Jeff. Um, I'm on 4th Street, and I'm going to go copy some comic books. I'll call you in a little bit. Uh, I don't know what this story's going to be, you know, space-wise, or how happy that people will be. I guess it's good promotion if they want it. Hey, um, I'm going to make copies of one of my books here like I usually do. And if it's all right, I guess they're going to take some footage of that. How long are you going to be staying? Uh, well, me, it, take, it takes me about an hour to make my book, and I don't know how much they want to do. They're going to be here, like more than five minutes. Yeah, I imagine they would probably take up a bunch of space, but uh, I don't know how long you think you... Monday. Alright, thanks. 
Oh well. Check to see if they have a similar machine across the street, but I don't think they do. Oh well, mission aborted. Well, this is the room where my younger brother Jack and I basically grew up. Uh, there used to be a double-decker bed here, and now there's just one. And uh, anything, all the stupid things written on the walls were done by Jack, and anything unhip or embarrassing on the walls is obviously Jack's doing, not mine. And, uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff. I'm not going to bother describing each element of it, except, except that uh, you can sort of see layers of what our interests might have been. Life is a story, don't you doubt? Bad times give you something to talk about. The next time you feel you're all worn out, remember life is a story, don't you doubt? It only takes a day for everything to turn around. Love is a story they tell to you, but the way they tell it ain't quite true. You'll wake up one day and you're 22, you'll know love was just a story they told to you. Love takes a lot of work like everything else you're gonna do. Friends are just the people you can talk with, some can talk about that, some can talk about this, but everyone changes and forever is a myth. Friends are just the people that you can talk with. A lot of them will leave, but only a few you're gonna miss. School is the place where I did my growing, they fill your brain to overflowing. They tell you this is all stuff you need to be knowing. School is the place where I did my growing. Just when I got to like it, it was time to be going. The world's the place where it all happens, they draw lines on and they call it a map. Between every line's a different flag flapping, the world's the place where it all happens. Six billion people all taking turns eating and napping. And animals are critters just like you and me, only difference is that they don't worry about things that they can't smell or see. Animals are critters just like you or me. So we buy pants and deodorants and claim not to be. Songs are just something to waste your time I listen to yours and you listen to mine And before we know it, the day's gone by Songs are just something to waste your time And so is everything else So do whatever makes you feel fine And God's just a story someone made up long ago Before they had books and TV shows I don't believe in him and I ain't afraid to say so I know God's just a story someone made up long ago But it's hard not to be superstitious Despite all you know and everyone's born and everyone dies, everyone who has the time wonders why. The ocean is blue and so is the sky, everyone's born and everyone dies. An old lady sighs and a new baby cries. Kisses are weird but they can be fun, instead of shaking hands it's like shaking tongues. I wish I got to do it more when I was young, kisses are weird but they can be fun. I hate going months and months without kissing anyone. Dreams are weird, but they can be fun too. They happen more often than kisses, it's true. And some I was naked, and in some I flew. Dreams are weird, but they can be fun too. I wonder if you're dreaming about me when I'm dreaming about you. And now that you heard everything I said, and there ain't nothing new inside your head, if you want to disregard it all, go ahead. Now that you heard everything I said, there's probably one or two things you could have been doing instead. Life is a story, don't you doubt, bad times give you something to talk about. The next time you feel you're all worn out, remember life is a story, don't you doubt. It only takes a day for everything to turn around. There was the, the comic book side to it, and then I guess where did the music thing come from? Where, where did it start, I guess? When did you start playing Um, I guess I sort of really started when I got out of uh, college 
and spent my first, because I, I had gone through school straight without ever taking a year off, and I think the first winter that I was out of school, just having, I was living on 28th Street in an apartment that uh, was sort of an illegal sublet, and I was paying about 150 a month, and so I was only working like two days a week to cover that, and uh, spending the rest of the time just uh, working on comic book stuff, and uh, you know, just living like a real starving artist lifestyle of um, re really having no money whatsoever and usually like no food either uh, and not having that wide of a social scene. Um, I, there was a few old friends in the city that I hung out with and I think over that winter was when I started playing a lot more guitar that uh, I first made up songs that I thought were like worth holding on to and uh, about spring of 98 I started playing open mics at, um, and then started playing shows later that year. How did you start getting yourself out there? Because I, like, I read that you would, you would um, you'd hand out tapes and stuff with little comic books inside and I guess when, like, when did the recording start for you? I guess. Well I never handed out stuff, you know it was always like a, a way to make some, make some money. Uh, you know, but tapes were so cheap. You know, you could get a tape for a dollar and record it and sell it for three dollars. And I sort of would always try to give people the most for their money. So there'd be like a whole little comic book that was folded into the tape. And um, I liked doing all these things where there were sort of little elaborate folded over packagings, but still, real, like sort of doing as much as I could with like, on, um, you know, really crude means. So it's just like a black and white photocopy, which was five cents, and a tape, which was like a buck or less. And then I'd sell them for like three dollars. So it was, uh, you know, it was like giving people like a good amount of interesting stuff for three dollars. And for me, it was like turning a good profit if I could make 10 tapes and sell them. Uh, so that was like a little extra money every, because I play the open mic like maybe once, you know, Monday night at the Sidewalk Cafe. Um, so hopefully I'd sell, and I was making my comic books also, so I'd sell some tapes and comic books. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just very simple recordings. Uh, there was, I mean, because all the songs were just voice and guitar, so you could just record them on anything. Um, and there's actually a, a complex recording device here. Uh, or, you know, a friend of mine would have a four track or somebody else might have Pro Tools on a computer about a year later. My friend Spencer had some stuff at his apartment. So it was always just whatever was uh, available.